apologies. I'm sorry, most of all. That I trusted and believed in a husband who hurt so many people. Good evening, everyone. Congresswoman Ina Greenwald holds face the media and the public on live television today. This was a marathon news conference, nearly five hours long. Representative Waldholz said her husband deceived her and built her father for four million dollars. Well, veteran True News political reporter Rod Decker begins our team coverage this evening. Rod, what do we know tonight that we didn't know before this conference? Well, she covered a lot of details, Terry, but mostly in a detailed and emotional way, she told the same story she always has. Enid Green Waldholz says she loved a man who betrayed her trust. I loved Joe Waldholz and trusted him with all my heart. I now know from the events of the last four weeks that the person that I loved and trusted never existed. Enid Waldholz says Joe Waldholz portrayed himself as rich, generous, and an expert in personal and campaign finance. He said he gave her a personal gift of $5 million when they got married. He took over her campaign and personal finances, showed her false documents to lull her into believing him. She loved him and relied on him. He was willing to be my full partner, not just in politics, but in life. He was willing to allow me to be the public official while he would stay in the background. They had a baby. Her father loaned the couple $4 million. Then she found out that everything Joe Waldholz had told her was a lie. Her marriage is broken. Her father has lost his money. How could she have believed so many lies for so long? I just ask you to do this. When you go home tonight and you're with the person you love most in the world, And they're holding you as you go to sleep, and they tell you that they love you and that you're their life. Ask yourself if you think they're capable of what I've just told you. And finally, the congresswoman apologized. And now I want to tell everyone how truly sorry I am to Karen Shepard and Merrill Cook. didn't know. To the voters, I didn't know. The press conference went on for five hours, longer than any other news conference anyone around here could remember. Enid Green Waldholz answered almost every question put to her, every germane question. She wore the press out, answered all the questions. She told her story. Terry? Five hours, a lot of time. You know, I think one thing that stands out here, we hear her apologies uh, here to the voters of Utah, yet she never really said she did anything wrong. All the fingers were pointed at Joe. That's what she said. She said she was stupid, very stupid. She said she wishes to have, she had bad judgment. She wished she had to do over again. She hurt people. But she said she didn't do anything knowingly wrong. And she will not resign. She, that's exactly right. Thank you very much, Rod. Thanks, Rod. Well, reaction to all this is mixed. Some Utahns say Enid Waldholz should resign, but others say give her a chance. Her press conference drew a handful of people to this television at the University of Utah. Hours of explaining drew some mixed reaction. I think it would be hard now for the public to give Enid the franchise of watching over our affairs because she couldn't watch over the affairs of those of someone so close to her. And it's a far cry from from being um, credible. Hey, you think of yourself um, in a relationship whether or not you're married and with, you, you have uh, bank statements coming in, um, your partner has bank statements coming in once a year, you're going to sneak a look. The news drew support from others in downtown Salt Lake. One Democrat says she was moved to tears. My heart goes out to her. I feel that she was 100% honest and truthful in everything that she said today, and I wish her all the best. I think what she said made me believe that she really didn't know what was going on. Um, I think it helped persuade the people in Utah that she's innocent. 
And now to the money. Congresswoman Waldholz's father, Forrest Green, is out $4 million in the scandal. How did that happen? Well, 2 News' Brian Malahi is outside Congresswoman Waldholz's office at the federal building right now. And Brian, is there an easy answer how Joe allegedly swindled millions of dollars from his in-laws? It's pretty complex, actually, Mary. There are no easy answers this evening. Now, we want to tell you from the outset, this is Enid Green Waldholz's story. We haven't heard from Joe yet. None of the allegations have been proven. But according to her, according to her legal accounting team, there were two major instances of deception committed by Joe Waldholz that allowed him to get at her father's money. Joe Waldholz was rich, or so thought Congresswoman Waldholz, a man worth millions. But suddenly in 1994, Joe could not spend money. He said his millions had been frozen because of a lawsuit over his family trust, a trust, it turns out, does not exist. What's worse, Joe said there were expensive court proceedings surrounding his ailing mother, and he had no money to help. He went to Forrest Green, his father-in-law, who loaned him $1.7 million with few questions asked. But Joe's assets were still frozen, so he still could not spend any of his money on Enid's campaign. So the Waldholz has turned again to Mr. Green, who gave them more than $2 million for the campaign in exchange for real estate Joe claimed he owned. Today, the congresswoman said the real estate did not exist either. But nobody made certain the real estate was real before the money changed hands. And no, there is no written documentation. Of any of that? No. At all? This was a family transaction, and there was no written documentation. What happened to the money? The congresswoman's legal accounting team says it went into the winning campaign for Congresswoman Waldholz. Two members of Joe's family in Pittsburgh toured Joe's alleged check-kiting scheme, and they suspect into Joe's pocket. But for Forrest Green, $4 million is gone. Now, a question is, is all this legal? dissected a little bit and it is complicated but if the couple has real estate and they give it to mr green in exchange for him giving them money then that according to waldholz and according to her legal advisors would be legal It'd be legal for her to put that money into the campaign of course absent the real estate and now they say there was no real estate that would be illegal but they say they would have to willingly know that they were committing illegal activity at the time and according to the congresswoman today she and her father did not know mary well, now brian we know that joe is being investigated what's the extent of legal issues surrounding the congresswoman the congresswoman will testify before a grand jury investigating joseph waldholz and finances she will testify on thursday he is to appear in court on friday to tell a judge whether or not he will testify. In addition, the Ethics Committee of the House have, has notified Congressman Waldholz that they want some answers from her about some of these allegations. And also the FEC, the Federal Election Commission, has been looking into the allegations as well. Okay, thank you very much. Brian Malahi reporting live from the Congresswoman's office in downtown Salt Lake. So, now to sum it all up, here's the bottom line on Enid Waldholz's five-hour news conference today. She blamed her personal and campaign finance problems on her estranged husband, Joe. She said she trusted her husband and never knowingly broke the law. She apologized to the people of Utah and to her opponents in the 1994 congressional race. And she said she will not resign and has not yet decided if she'll seek re-election. Both Enid and Joe Waldholz are scheduled to testify before a Washington, D.C. grand jury later this week. And uh, as of this time, there has not yet been a response from Joe Waldholz. Well, this was also the day a Utah judge ruled to unseal Waldholz's divorce file. That event grew in interest today when Enid Waldholz alluded to information about Joe's questionable lifestyle choices contained in the divorce papers. Our Michael Rawson is at 3rd District Court right now. And, Michael, what did you find in those papers? Well, Mary, what uh, exactly the Congresswoman meant uh, by uh, alluding to her estranged husband's lifestyle choices is still the unresolved $64 question tonight. It was not answered in the divorce documents that were unsealed late today by Judge William Thorne. First of all, let's go to the murky charge thrown out by the Congresswoman uh, against her estranged husband. Besides the financial misdoings, I have found evidence of other questionable lifestyle choices. 
that I'm not going to identify today. So we don't know what the Congresswoman was talking about. Perhaps the most compelling information that was released today is the affidavit Congresswoman Waldholz filed a month ago when she filed for divorce, in which she uh, uh, asks the judge to grant her sole custody of the couple's three-month-old daughter. In the document, she says that Joe is uh, short-tempered and emotionally detached from their daughter. And uh, quoting the document, she says, uh, the defendant's conduct, as described above, dis demonstrates a conscious disregard for the child's well-being and proper care. And as a result of this conduct, I believe the defendant does not possess the necessary emotional and psychological stability to function appropriately as Elizabeth's custodial parent. In many cases, this uh, divorce reads like your typical divorce, except for that dangling charge that remains hanging out there tonight and will likely fuel all sorts of speculation about exactly what the uh, family values congresswoman meant. Mary? Thank you very much. Michael Rossin reporting live from 3rd District Court.